What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Darkened Garage. We are actually diving straight in today and starting tuning Super Auto 2.0. I'm connecting up right now. Hopefully we got enough battery life on everything to last for a while. What you're gonna see is me right here in the main camera. I'm gonna record the screen also. And then on top of it, I'm gonna record the tablet for the micro squirt so we can kind of keep an eye on everything as we go through this process. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And as I said, today is the first video where we dive into tuning Super Auto 2.0. I gotta sneeze, so hold on. I'm back. So I am going ahead, I'm opening up everything right now, kind of getting everything loaded up. We're gonna go through setting up our tune and I need to load a couple things into different spots here. Uh, so bear with me, I'm gonna go ahead and dump my most recent tune into the micro squirt that is going to uh, have the boost limiters on. That way, if we get up to 10 PSI or somewhere around there, it should start venting boost. Uh, that is just to kind of keep things safe while we start dial dialing this thing in. We're going to eventually go over to a smaller pulley with a lot more boost, but what we're going to do is try and control the boost on the top end and get more boost early on through the centrifugal. There's a lot of guys uh, over in the Pro Charger world that kind of do that process, and I thought it'd be fun to try and do that here, but let's go ahead. We're going to fire up Tuner Studio here to see if we can get connected. We should have our Bluetooth adapter hooked up right now. Then we'll have to disconnect from here and connect it over on the tablet and get everything going there. After that, we're going to dive into the uh, HP tuner side of things and get our tune set up specifically for uh, just dialing things like the idle and the low speed math drivability. Okay, so I'm connected up to uh, the micro squirt right now and you can see some of the things that I've enabled here is boost control. Uh, I've left a lot of this stuff basically set in. Uh, we've got a 20 kPa delta. We're gonna look at the, the table here, which is our boost target table. Found this out. This is actually in KPA. We don't have throttle position, so we're always gonna be on this bottom row, but we're gonna be looking across at our RPM. So we're gonna cap out at 170 KPA. It should start, and this has a PID controller on it. So it should start uh, starting to bypass the bypass valve starting to allow pressure to bypass the bypass valve. That's a lot of bypasses. Once we get close to 170 with the idea that it will hold pressure at 170, uh, which is what, 70 kPa over, so 10 PSI around there. So that's all been burned into place. We can go ahead and get out of here. <coughs> <coughs> Now I have our as found, technically it's not our as found, it's the one that we went through and set everything back to stock. There is one thing that I do need to change on here real quick to a stock value and that is underneath our IAT sensor cowl because this was for the uh, IAT breakout. We're no longer running that, we're running the MAF uh, IAT. So we wanna set that back to stock. We'll go ahead and do that now. Now we're just gonna walk through and do the map tune setup. And the big thing that we wanna do on that is go ahead and set our RPM disabled low. So we'll set it down to nine and our 10 and nine. So that means that we're gonna be in math only all the time. We'll go up underneath our fuel, double check our stoic. Uh, I wanted a 14.7 stoic across. So I'm gonna adjust this out a little bit, 14.7 this one out. And then I'm going to linearize it across the scale there. So we're targeting 14.7. We're gonna go ahead and disable our O2 readiness and we'll max out our ECT enable. So below this engine temp, we'll go 400. And then it says above this engine temp, we'll take this down to zero. That way we know that everything is turned off as far as our uh, O2s go. Now, we might run into an issue. Our O2s were fighting to keep this thing running whenever we first started it, but we'll go into that and we'll talk about that. PE is very rich right now. We're gonna leave that as is. We will come back and dial PE later, uh, dial it in later on. Temperature control will turn off COT. 
cutoff. We're going to disable that. And so above this, DFCO will be enabled. We'll bump this up to 8,000. Below this, it'll be disabled. So we'll make this 7999. Lean fuel savings disabled, flex fuels disabled. All that stuff I've already disabled from the previous tune. We should be good to go there. Okay, all the changes that we've done here should force us over into math only open loop, which is what we use to tune. We're gonna go ahead and write. We're gonna just do config only for the ECM. In fact, we do not even have the TCM as a part of this save file. Actually, let's save this first. File, save as, and we'll just call it old math step one. Math step one. Now we're gonna write the ECM. As I said, we're not dealing with the TCM right now. We're just gonna get the engine running with all this stuff. Now, if you haven't kept up with the video series to see what all we've done, we have added a bigger blow blower on it. Uh, we have gone direct port meth injection through a Holly High Ram, which we've also added. Now we have uh, auxiliary fuel injection through the microscope. We have done a lot of modifications on this. Most of this stuff is not going to be effective underneath, uh, you know, vacuum or whatever. Whenever we get into boost, that's when all the additional systems are going to be firing up. But we've also added some cool things like EGTs through the micro squirt so we can watch our exhaust te gas temperatures. So go over to Tuning 101 and check out the Super Auto playlists. Uh, if you want to get caught up with seeing me install some of these modifications, set everything up on that side. But we are good to go. We are connected up here. I'm going to go ahead and power cycle the vehicle. fire the old tablet up here and see if we can't get our micro squirt uh, to start. And it's complaining because the battery's about dead. I had a sneaking suspicion that would happen. Okay, we're connected up through our dash. We're connected up through our laptop here now. What we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that our uh, wide band is warmed up before we try this start because the thing's probably not gonna run. So we'll connect up, we'll start recording, making sure that we're gonna get good data because we're gonna try and uh, take a look at what kind of fueling that we get because we're gonna have to go right in off the bat and probably make some adjusting, adjustments to the math curve before we can even get this thing to start. Looks like it was running a little bit uh, rich from the get-go, so we, we're probably gonna have to take some fuel out but you'll see what I'm talking about whenever we get this started up here. And of course my wideband disappears. Okay, wideband's finally reading in. It was having some conflicts with the uh, Bluetooth, even though the Bluetooth is hooked up through the tablet right now. Let's see if we can get this thing to start. Really rich, really rich. Not sure why we logging in AFR. Yeah, it looks to be because our transform's not set up right, so. Come on, baby, hang in there. There we go. Now we're reading in what we need to read. So we're gonna let it kind of do its thing here for a second, get some data in. Okay, that's probably enough. Let's go ahead and shut her down. I should have stopped scanning. Remember, whenever you're doing this process, start and stop scanning before, uh, only whenever the vehicle's running, unless you're doing startup stuff, so. Let's go back in. We're gonna start recording. You get a bunch of junk data in there if you turn the vehicle off while you're scanning, so make sure in situations like this, that you stop beforehand, then turn it off. We'll go ahead and disconnect. We're gonna copy in our 
EQ error for a mass airflow sensor and let's bring up our airflow table. We're gonna have a pretty big change, but I'll show you what we'll do about that. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna multiply by percentage instead of half because this is a, we're just looking to get our idle dialed in. There you can see the shift right there. Boom, right there is where it ends. See the difference between 197 and 237? So what I'm gonna do is come in here, shift everything back down. So I'll come in and do 0.99 or so. Look at my numbers. And I'm just gonna multiply these down till they kind of fall in line. You'll see them fall in line down on the graph also. That looks pretty smooth. We'll do the same thing on the other end if need be. Uh, see, we're still pretty rich down here. So we'll smooth or we'll interpolate that and we'll go below there. Multiply that down. And we'll do it about right there. So our step one, that's it. We've got our step one in. We're gonna save this. Step two and load it up. Okay, we should see a pretty significant change after that shift. Uh, hopefully, this time, it'll give us enough fuel to at least get out of the garage because it's gonna stink the house up if I don't get this thing outside. <laughs> we'll go ahead and connect up and start scanning from the, from the bat on this one. See what it looks like. And we're still a little bit rich, a little bit rich, but way better. As you can see, now we're hitting uh, just a couple percentage. Let's pull out. This is the first time the truck's been pulled out in probably a month. This way I can shut the garage now. Our EGTs are running a lot lower now. If you notice beforehand, they were over a thousand degrees. Now they're in the 900 to 950 range. Very interesting. And we're bouncing around a little bit. We're hitting some different cells where we're rich on one side, uh, a little bit lean on the other. We're gonna let it just sit here and do its thing for a bit and capture a decent amount of data as everything bounces around. We're getting a lot of bounce. Uh, part of that being that our RPMs are a little bit low. I'm gonna bump our RPMs up on our next change here, so. You can see here that even though we're running close to one, where it says that we're running a little bit lean because our uh, commanded is not quite there yet. We're right around 9.7. We've got a couple of times that it goes rich, goes lean. We'll get all that smoothed out. So let's go ahead, disconnect now. We're gonna leave it running in the background now so we can kind of get things warmed up as we make our changes to our tune. So we'll go in underneath idle. I wanna bump our idle up. I wanna be running about 800 across the board on my truck. Seems to like it there, so we'll bump everything up in this table, 800, rolling movie idle, uh, moving idle, we'll do the same thing. Uh, take her up to 800. We'll check our startups, make sure they're good. They're a little bit low in some spots, so uh, I'm gonna max this out to about 800 on the same here, and then some spots where it's lower than 800. I'm just gonna come in here and interpolate across to get it up higher. Same ordeal in gear. We'll bring it from this point on to 800. And then spots lower than that, we'll go out and we'll interpolate across it. I did not want to smooth, I wanted to interpolate. Boom, there we go. So. Now we've adjusted our idle, let's go back over, we'll copy our graph, and we're gonna do the multiply by half on this one because we're gonna try and get this thing a little bit closer. Pretty big shift right down there. That spot, 53, 20, 22, 20, 2250 to 2550, pretty decent little hump there. I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit and we'll save this as number three. Okay, let's shut her down.
Okay, we've got the new tune in there. Let's go ahead and connect up. We're going to start it up before we start logging this time. Pull the log up. Uh, we're getting bad data from the wide band. We'll give it a second. Now let's try it, see if we're getting good data. Still getting bad data from the wide band. Still getting bad data from the wide band. Come on, wide band, catch up. There we go. Now we're getting good data from the wide band. Got the idle set up to about 800. It's hunting right around 800, as you can see on here. Uh, might need to slow some of the, tar uh, the timing adjustments down to help maintain a little bit smoother idle. But we're to the point now where we could probably go out and drive. We're a little bit rich on the bottom end. We're not too concerned about that right now. Better a little bit rich than a little bit lean. Now that we've got it close, we're running right between 950 and 1000 on the EGTs. Uh, so we're going to wrap this video up. This has been getting the math dialed in for idling, stage one, kind of getting the tune ready, everything dialed in there. Uh, so we're going to come back with getting the math dialed in with some driving on it. So stick around. Remember, thanks for stopping by the garage. ABT, always be tuning.